I'd like to give you a small analogy that will help you understand this issue. Why, why are hearts sealed or why is that mentioned in the Quran? Uh, some of you or many of you are familiar with exercise working out, right? So imagine somebody got into an accident and they're, they're, they're uh, in the hospital. And they're in a hospital bed for six months. And they haven't moved their legs for six months to a year. When they get up, are they able to use their legs? No, probably they're, you know, they tip over. Like that, the, if, if our muscles, if they're not worked, if they're not exercised, they start losing their ability to function. Like if you keep your eyes closed for five years, you're probably going to open them blind. You understand? The ability to accept guidance, the ability to reason in a, in a, in an un, in a fair way, in an unbiased way, is a God-given muscle that we have a spiritual muscle that we have, an intellectual muscle that we have. And people at the time of the Prophet ﷺ were invited to exercise that muscle. And they refused to. They refused to exercise the ability to take in and seriously consider truth when it came to them. And the, you continue to deny that capability you have inside you, the exercise. You refuse to think, you refuse to think, you refuse to use your heart, you refuse to be sincere. And guess what? Eventually your heart is no longer capable of what it was originally capable of, you lost that muscle, you lost that ability. And that is an analog analogous way of explaining what does it mean when a heart is sealed. It is not something that a, a person has a belief system and therefore their heart is sealed. That isn't the case. An atheist could be atheist for philosophical reasons or for psychological reasons. And we, we don't know what's going on inside somebody's heart. We don't. As a matter of fact, on this issue, whose heart is sealed and whose is not sealed, my favorite example in the Quran is that of the worst character probably mentioned in the Qur'an who even shaitan would probably want an autograph, Fir'aun. Fir'aun, okay? I mean, declares himself God, the Pharaoh, for those of you who aren't familiar with that, but the Pharaoh, declares himself God, commit, committer of like massive genocide, all kinds of, you know, hedonism, ego, pride, you name it, you name the vice, he's got it. You name the vice, he's got it. And yet when Moses is sent to him, alayhi salam, to speak to him, he's supposed to not judge what's in his heart. And he's told, Is there anything left in you? You might want to cleanse yourself. Maybe you want to become a good person now. Maybe even you can change, killer of babies. Even you can change. I mean, you would think, if you think of heartless, you think of a murderer, and the murderer of children? I mean, it's beyond imagination. And yet his heart is not condemned yet. Even he's given the opportunity. So the idea of hearts being sealed, the final bit on this answer, the idea of people's hearts being sealed is not something you and I have privy to. We do not have access to know whose heart is sealed and whose isn't. And thank God for that.